Tehran is threatening to stop complying with a key requirement of an international nuclear agreement, but says European powers still have the time to save the deal. Now, it says it's ramping up enrichment of low-grade uranium and will exceed the limit it's allowed to stop out in just 10 days if European countries don't find a way to protect, protect Iran from crippling U.S. sanctions. We'll go live to our report in just a few minutes. But first, Fred Replikin tells us more about Iran's effort to turn up the pressure on European powers. As tensions between the U.S. and Iran escalate after the attacks on two tankers in the Gulf of Oman, Iran also announcing it's scaling back its commitments under the nuclear agreement, drastically accelerating production of low-grade enriched uranium. I have said that we are counting down. In 10 days' time, we will overpass, of course, the uh, limitation of keeping 300 kilograms of stockpiles of LEU and rich uranium inside the country. And of course, there would be other measures later on if the Europeans will not do their parts. Iran wants European countries to make good on their commitments under the deal to provide Iran with economic relief in the face of tough U.S. sanctions. Iran's oil exports have been all but cut off by the Trump administration's policy of maximum pressure and the U.S. reiterating its claims that Iran was behind the tanker attack last week near the Strait of Hormuz. It's unmistakable what happened here. These were attacks by the Islamic Republic of Iran on commercial shipping on the freedom of navigation with a clear intent uh, to deny transit through the strait. Iran verbally firing back. A senior official now saying Tehran believes the U.S. may have committed the attacks. On the streets of Tehran, a mix of concern and defiance. There is a fear among the people that there might be war, this man says, but our people would like to have stability and peace. America is nothing, this woman says. Whenever we talk, they don't answer us properly. There's no point in talking to them. Of course, there are some fears, this woman says, but we hope that the United States will moderate its hard line, and I hope our government will be more flexible so they can come to terms with each other and achieve peace. But so far, neither side seems willing to back down, both the U.S. and Iran saying they don't want war, but demanding the other side make the first move towards de-escalation. Fred Plaikin, CNN, Tehran. We are covering these developments as only CNN can. Fred Plaikin joins us now live from Tehran. Atika Schubert is in London and Sam Kiley is in Abu Dhabi. And Fred, I want to start with you, if I may, because this is yet another blow to the nuclear deal that was signed back in 2015. But put it into context for our viewers right around the world. What is Iran's intent here? Is it to power the country or to build a bomb? I think for the Iranians, it's absolutely to, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say to power the country, but I do think that they want to have the benefits of nuclear energy uh, on the one hand to power some of the country, but also for research uh, purposes as well. And on the other hand, of course, for them, the nuclear agreement, uh, ISA, was also extremely important uh, because for them it, it was supposed to provide sanctions relief. And right now what's going on or what the Iranians say is going on is that they're adhering to this nuclear agreement. They're putting curbs on their nuclear program in a massive way, but they're not getting any of the benefits. They say, look, uh, there's no companies that are investing here uh, in Iran because of uh, U.S. sanctions pressure, and they're not able to sell at least most of their oil on international markets, and the Iranians are saying that needs to stop. So they're putting a lot of pressure on the Europeans because they know that the Iranians and the Europeans are on the same page on this issue. Both sides want the nuclear agreement to survive, uh, and, and on a different page, of course, than the Trump administration, which has already pulled out uh, of the nuclear agreement, and the Iranians are saying, look, if you guys think the nuclear agreement is important, Europeans, if you want it to survive, you're going to have to start putting real things in place to make sure your companies can do business here in Iran. Otherwise, for the Iranians, this deal simply isn't worth keeping around, Isa. Well, let's get the European reaction. Fred, do stay with us as well as Sam Kiley. Atika, you're here, joining me here. We heard from Federica uh, Mogherini, uh, the EU foreign minister. What did she have to say? Did she see these comments from Iran, Atika, as a threat at all? Well, she refused to be drawn on this. Uh, she wasn't going to be baited. She didn't draw any red lines. She said, for now, Iran is sticking to the agreement. Take a listen to what she said. Mm -hmm. 
at the moment, uh, as of today, Iran is still compliant. And uh, we uh, strongly uh, hope, encourage, expect that Iran continues to comply uh, with its uh, uh, commitments under the GCPOA in full. Um, and I would not enter into a blame game at all. So our focus is not to enter into a blame game or uh, giving responsibility for uh, a collapse of a deal that might come. Our focus is to keep the agreement in place. So basically, she's saying, listen, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. In the meantime, you know, Germany, France and the UK have all been working to try and put into place what's called INSTEX. This is this financial trade yeah. workaround to the U.S. sanctions. And Germany's foreign minister, Heiko Maas, was there last week in Tehran trying to make it work. So there was some hope that maybe we could see the first transactions mm. coming, but so far we haven't had seen oh, anything solid. Let's own that, because Iran that basically said they've given us a lot of good words, this is from Iran, but not deeds talking about Europe. Why is it taking Europe so long? Well, this is a really tricky thing to do. I mean, the U.S. has said essentially any trade with Iran, barring humanitarian needs, is, going, is completely out. Uh, these mm. sanctions are tough and they're going to get tougher. And Europe has been saying, well, maybe we can find some sort of a currency workaround where it only with the trade only between the EU and Iran. But that's tricky to do with such a dominant economy like the, like the US. And so it's taken a lot of time to set up this mechanism. They haven't had the first transaction in it mm. yet. And even if once they get the first transaction, it's only going to be in pharmaceuticals, medical supplies, those things that the United States sees as you know, necessary, to, necessary for humanitarian reasons. They're not getting into the big trades yet. And I think that's why Iran is getting really frustrated, saying you made all these promises for trade and now they're falling through. And what we heard today, in fact, Sam, from, from Iran was the fact they are feeling the pinch. All this coming just days after suspected attacks against two foreign tankers in the Gulf of Oman. We heard that report from Fred Pleiken. So mistrust between both countries, clearly an all time high. Now, you've just written a piece, Sam, um, for CNN.com, and, uh, you, and you say, you say in your piece, Iran benefits the most from these increased tensions. Explain to our viewers why. Well, it's a bit counterintuitive, uh, but that makes it a bit more fun. Now, essentially, uh, if the Iranians can leave the impression without being formally, legally blamed, that they can close the Straits of Hormuz with a relatively low investment of some limpet mines, and they've already had a material effect on shipping through those straits. Uh, there's been a 10 times increase in insurance rate, I'm told, by uh, two different companies uh, involved in shipping through that location. There's pressure now on uh, the Royal Navy and other uh, international uh, naval forces there to help out and advise ships as they go through. They can uh, conjure up memories of the tanker wars in the 1980s when uh, the US Navy was involved in protecting shipping, Iraqi shipping mostly, from being attacked uh, from the Ira Iranians uh, and driving up oil prices and insurance rates and so on. So for a relatively low investment and no blame, they've been able to send this signal that they can have material effect on the well-being, particularly of the Europeans. Remember, a quarter of the European Union's exports goes to the Gulf. Uh, that's a countries mm. like this one I'm sitting in, in the U U UAE. Uh, so closing down uh, that kind of route is catastrophic economically uh, for, for uh, countries in the region and in Europe. If you then combine uh, the issues that you've been discussing with Atika over the uh, JP, uh, JCPOA, you see that what they're doing is threatening a double whammy. And the other thing about the Iranians is that they're also signalling that they can take a lot more pain than the economies in the West. They can take, take it because they're authoritarian and they can take it because they have a kind of tradition of doing that. Remember, a mm. million people were killed in the Iran-Iraq war. It's not that long ago. So they are sending out these signals that they're robust. They've also got the capacity using swarms of uh, small, fast boats of the sort that we saw uh, rescuing people uh, from those stricken uh, tankers a few days ago uh, to, to even bypass the American military might. If you've got hundreds of these boats all coming at a, literally at a rate of knots towards battleships, some would get through. Uh, so they are signalling that they've got some power and therefore it's necessary to talk to them. Ultimately, they want to be able to dial down on the sanctions that the US have imposed unilaterally, much to the irritation and despair of the American allies in Europe. And um, finally, I, I want to bring in, if I can, Fred Blyken, very quickly, Fred, you heard what Sam was saying, they're threatening a double whammy. Slightly risky, is it not, for Iran at this stage? Mm. 
Well, I think that the Iranians at this point in time believe that they're in a position where they're essentially calling the Trump administration's bluff. The Iranians uh, have been saying for quite a while, they believe that there are people in the Trump administration, like, for instance, the National Security Advisor John Bolton and, for instance, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who are driving the administration towards a war with Iran. But they fundamentally still believe uh, that President Trump himself while he wants to keep this uh, sanctions pressure upright, does not want a war with Iran. And it's something that the Iranians themselves have said as well. They don't want this to escalate into any sort of war. But at the same time, and Sam is absolutely right in saying it, they say that they are ready for one if it does happen. Not just uh, because of the military power that they have, but first and foremost, because of all the militias that they control in the greater Middle East, uh, Isa. One of the things that a senior former Revolutionary Guard commander told me not too long ago, he said, look, the Americans need to understand if this comes to a shooting war, it's not just the armies against one another. It, they say that uh, next to every military base that the U.S. has in the Middle East, there is an Iranian militia that, uh, or a pro-Iranian militia uh, that uh, that can be mobilized very quickly. So the Iranians clearly saying they do have a lot of power in this as well. And and, and today, even uh, interestingly, um, the chief of Iran's general staff came out and said, "Look, if we wanted to close the Strait of Hormuz, that's certainly something we could do. We could do it openly uh, if we wanted to." But the Iranians at this point are saying they don't want this to escalate. They certainly don't want to close the Strait of Hormuz. They say they want to keep it open because they themselves say they feel responsible and they are responsible for the security of the shipping that goes through there, at least in, 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 in parts of the Strait of Hormuz and, of course, in general in the Persian Gulf as well.